right, so here it is. Today we had our beta test of Battlefield Oblivion, and I recorded the entire thing. I'm not going to talk through the whole thing. I will give some pointers right at the beginning, tell about kind of the things that I saw and the things that I learned. Uh, but other than that, the last portion of the video, it'll just be silent. You guys are able to watch as much as you want and you can see how everything goes. But uh, I'll start off with some tips. So here goes. The first thing to notice is that there is no way to change accounts in the middle. So if that's part of your plan, you need to change your plan. Next, as you go into the uh, battlefield map, you'll start with an hour and 10 minutes if you go in immediately. Uh, it does give you a 10 minute prep phase, which is uh, what you're seeing here on the screen. And all of the bases of your alliance will end up together. And you'll start next to your fortress. The ultimate objective of the game is to collect the space key that'll show up there at the spaceport and then move it through the relays that will then become available throughout the battle that you're in. It's important to pay attention because 15 minutes into the battle is when the space key will become available and it's whoever gets there first that is able to pick it up. Um, it's smart to plan to have a strong and fast player being the person you're trying to get there and there are probably some techniques that you could use to get closer and faster. So now that the battle has begun, what you're going to try to do is go after a couple of different things. One of them is to start placing watchtowers. And these watchtowers are used to take uh, territory. You'll see up at the top of the screen, uh, all the time there's a percentage and that's the amount of territory in the map that you have covered. You do get a nominal score for that over time. Um, and the other thing that you need to be searching for uh, is these craters. They'll show up here in just a second on the video, but what they are, it's where you gather the material needed to make watchtowers. And with th those watchtowers are real important um, because you're able to use them um, as point scoring uh, and ultimately to get closer to other bases. Without the watchtowers, you aren't able to attack other bases. But see right here, this is where those craters are. You can gather at those and I would recommend having several people doing that throughout the entire battle so that you have enough materials to be able to um, make the watchtowers. Uh, and those watchtowers are only placeable by R4s and R5s. So keep that in mind. Uh, and if you have gathering parts, place them uh, in your APC if you're going to be gathering. And a quick reminder that uh, T1 troops are better and faster at gathering so that's a, a pro tip if you will and also remember that prospector apcs don't work you saw it maybe there on the video just a second ago um, prospector apcs do not work when you're on the oblivion battlefield so if you're paying attention to the score at the top of the screen um, our enemy actually jumped out ahead of us they got points ahead of us because i wasn't quite sure what to tell my guys to do um, and then if i you know, as I paid a little bit more attention, I realized that there are some buildings that you can occupy, which I knew, I just didn't know where they were, how to occupy and that kind of stuff, or if we needed to be touching them. So the buildings don't need to be touching your space in order for you to occupy it. You can start occupying it as soon as it's available. Um, and there are phases throughout the battle when they become available. So jump out right away and go after them. Um, I'm going to put up some pictures here for just a second so you can see what the buildings look like uh, and then also talk about some of their reasons or some of the, the the benefits of using those buildings individually since it is on the screen here that's a relay right there uh, and that will end up being the path for the person who holds the key once the person captures the key the game automatically moves them between the rel relays within certain time periods if your enemy occupies that building and the person carrying the key is too weak, they'll lose and they'll drop the key uh, and then it'll start over. 15 minutes will go by and then the key will drop the spaceport again and, and you'll begin again. If the key carrier is stronger when it goes into those preoccupied buildings uh, or the buildings aren't occupied, they will take the building, they'll wait there for a specified period of time and then their APC will continue to move along the path. Once you go to three um, additional points are given. So that's, you know, a major way to get points. You get 5,000 points just for getting the key and then 5,000 more if you complete the path. 
So if you look at the map, there are blue and red or pink buildings uh, and then white buildings. Those white ones are completely unoccupied. Blue buildings are, are buildings occupied by your alliance. Pink buildings are buildings occupied by the enemy. Um, and I may be wrong about that. It might be that each team is assigned a blue and a red just at the beginning of the battle. Um, I just don't know. I've only had the one battle and my team was blue. The other team was red. So um, don't quote me on that for sure that that's what's happening, that it's enemy and whatever. But, but the white buildings definitely are unoccupied. And when the buildings are being occupied or they're contested, so to speak, um, they become yellow. And they show up on the map as yellow until they are... Um, occupied by either alliance. You can then attack other people's buildings if they are already occupied um, and they will become yellow again if you attack them. This building is the armory and there are a few of them throughout the map. They're probably the most important building for you to try to occupy because they give you a massive might and resistance buff. And I don't know this for sure because it doesn't actually tell you the number that it's supposed to be that it gives you, but based on my looking at my own stats i believe that each building gives you a 50 percent might and resistance buff um, when i was looking at my attacks after the battle i was showing 621 percent on my might and like 575 on my resistance for my class apc and it's not normally that high it's usually like 400 and under under 400 just under 400 for my resistance <clears throat> so that building's a big deal and I think there are four of them throughout the map. So trying to get that building occupied right away can help you against a stronger opponent. As you're watching the video, you'll see that I'll be randomly clicking some of the buildings because I'm trying to figure out when they're occupiable. Um, and like the spaceport, for example, if you click on it and try to go to it, it'll tell you that it's, you know, the amount of time that's left until you're able to take the key. Um, that's how I know it's 15 minutes into the battle. Um, but some of the other buildings are also off limits um, until the second round. Uh, and, you know, you click on them to figure that out. The ones that are immediately available, though, go after them as fast as you can because as soon as you get them, you start gaining points. You also gain personal points for having hit the buildings, and you'll see that um, on those um, reports. So when you click on it, it tells you the points personally and then the points that you'll get per minute if we're having it. A place to verify your points per minute is by clicking on the total scores. It shows what your alliance is getting per minute and what your enemy is alliance is getting. Um, and so if they occupy a building and you take it away, they lose that, that money or that point source. So um, that's a, a good way to prevent them from outscoring you because ultimately that's the, the goal. Whoever has the most points, just like uh, Doomsday Battles, they win. Um, it isn't taking somebody's fortress or anything like that. It's outscoring them. So instead of uh, waiting for the video to get to the point where I actually click on the buildings to show you the different ones, I'm just going to go ahead and put up some screenshots that I took of each one of the buildings um, and what their benefits are, their points are, um, and what you get for getting them. First off is the rocket repair shop. Um, for getting that the first time you get 300 points for your alliance and 300 points personally but then also every minute 200 points are added to your team's score as long as you hold it if you lose it of course you no longer get it um, and those points the 300 points are only given to you the first time you take the building after that it's about holding it um, and that's also true that if you know if somebody else tries to take it from you they don't get those points up front they only get the rolling points that happen every minute. The next building here is the hospital. You get 200 points personally and for the Alliance and then a 100 a minute as long as you hold it. Same rules apply as that other building, but you also get an increase or a buff to your speed at which you are wounded or recovered um, while, you're in, while you're in the battle. Next we have outposts. They're the lowest score. There are 100 points uh, for the Alliance and you personally, and then 50 every minute while you hold it. And there's no buff that you get for having gotten that outpost. The last type of building uh, is what's called a command center. It kind of looks like a satellite dish or something. Um, it's worth a few more points, but it's the unique one of the bunch because 
you get a buff, which is a continued provision of teleports is what it says, but also you get teleports for having taken it for the first time. I believe you get five, but I, I didn't keep track of it well enough to tell you that that's correct right away. Um, as time goes on and we play more, we'll find out. So uh, I'm gonna go into why that's important here pretty quick. But remember that that building is, is also very good because it continually gives you more teleports. So on the note of teleports, they're important because you can only teleport to land that is occupied by your alliance, similar to Eden or Doomsday or whatever, but you don't build a teleport pad ahead of time. You use the watchtower and the surrounding area around the watchtower to be able to teleport within that area. Once a watchtower is started, which takes about two and a half minutes to build, um, once it's started, you can teleport in its space um, and if you are immediately touching the area occupied by the enemy alliance you can attack any bases that are in there um, and in our battle that became really important because our players on our team were drastically stronger than the guys on the other team and that made it so we scored a ton of points just by attacking them um, but had their watchtowers not be been touching ours and they had bases in there, we wouldn't have been able to attack them. So um, avoiding that if you're against stronger alliance might be an option. Uh, also, um, it made it possible for us to go in and attack their watchtowers, take them down, get closer to their bases while they were trying to teleport. But uh, you don't have unlimited teleports. It's not like uh, other types of parts of the game when you can just use diamonds to use them or whatever. But you come into the battle with what you have. You know, I think it's it gives you five initially, and then as you start taking stuff, you get more. Up at the top, you'll see the number of teleports that you have available. Twenty being the maximum you can have at any given time. And so, um, next to the scores up there, you'll have a number out of twenty. Sometimes it says twenty out of twenty, but you'll also see it go down as they get used. Uh, and when you're out, you're out. Fortunately, the map is not huge, and so a really long attack is two minutes. Um, but it, it is something to manage and, and keep track of. Also, if you are the key carrier, um, or you're trying to become the key carrier, having watchtowers near the spaceport when the time comes is obviously preferable because you can get to the spaceport more quickly. Um, so using those watchtowers to get closer is a big deal. Uh, and gathering to be able to have the resources to build the watchtowers is also um, integral in, in order to be able to be successful. So I think I have covered all of the really important points on how to actually play. Um, ultimately the goal is to score as many points as possible. There are several ways to score points and so setting up a strategy is going to be de dependent on how strong your team is, um, you know, what the capacity of, they, of them to participate um, and some other factors there, but, but really keep in mind that planning ahead is a big deal. Um, the teams currently are only 20 people on the map. It doesn't matter how big your alliance is. They, 20 people is the max with 10 alternates. If somebody doesn't show up from the 20 that you selected, someone from the 10 can be selected or can jump into the map and they just teleport in or they join the, the fight right away. After the prep phase, which is that 10 minutes, people, even if they were selected to be on the team, cannot join. Um, as of right now, I'm hoping that they change that. I'm going to send a complaint, if you will, to the developers that that, I think, really sucks. Because we had guys that showed up three or four minutes after and they didn't get to get in. And, you know, and they had to watch us talk to each other when they didn't get to participate. So... Right now, that's a problem. Uh, hopefully, it does get changed. And the news updates are a nightmare. If you watch them at the bottom of the screen during the video, you can see that they are non-stop. And that's because you have all of the people that are competing in Oblivion at the same time. It shows all of those attacks, even though you can't see them on the map. They're occupying the same server, obviously, um, as if it was in the same state. And so you're getting all those updates. Again, that's another thing that I hope that they fix when this is not just a beta test uh, and it's real. 
because it is super annoying. It's really hard to get in and send messages to your alliance, and it's even harder for your alliance members to see that you sent a message because it does never show up at the bottom of the screen unless they're actively looking for it. The positives are that you know you get to battle. It's very intense. It's quite fun, um, and you know you get to test out your APCs really because you can attack people and you don't lose the troops. You know, they do die in the battle there on, in Oblivion, but then when the war is over, you get them all back. So uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, all in all though, uh, I found it really enjoyable. I hope that they implement this into the main functions of the game because everybody that played on my team really liked it. The rewards were very good. Um, and uh, I hope that they stay the way that they are. I, I doubt that they will. I'm guessing that they'll change them to something that's a little bit more reasonable, but um, the guys who were able to participate and were success were on the winning teams got 10 orange tickets, and in the case of my stronger guys, 20,000 doomsday coins. Um, oh, I guess the one thing that I'll mention about that, the 20,000 doomsday coins, it's because they scored enough points. There are tiers, and you can look at them in the rules what the tiers are, but basically you get a certain number of coins per your personal score um, and 5,000 is the number that would give you the highest category. Um, 5,000 is not easy to come by. I didn't get 5,000 5, points because I was worried about getting all the information um, but I was in like 6th place. My alliance is fairly strong um, and only a few guys, I think 4 guys in my alliance got 5,000 points. Um, it didn't help that halfway through the battle we realized what we were supposed to be doing. But but uh, keep all those things in mind. And if you would like, continue to watch the video. There's cool stuff. There's several pretty big attacks that you can see. You know, I always enjoy watching an, uh, an APC hit a base or something and six others get sh shut down and pushed away. But, but uh, feel free to turn it off now if you don't want to watch any more of the battle. But if you do, enjoy it. Um, hopefully the music that is is open source is not too annoying to you. Um, I just didn't want you to have to be listening to Dead Air, and I don't use the sound of the app because it annoys the crap out of me. So thanks very much for watching, guys. You have a wonderful day.
said, I have the honor and privilege to, uh, to lead and to serve with great pleasure. Um, it is 